Welcome back to Seriously Funny. I'm your host, Mashnor Kabir, and I am asleep right now. The title for this episode is quite depressing, really, really depressing, actually. And that's a pretty good representation of how the first week of college went for me. Uh, when you're listening to this, I finished my second week, but oh my goodness, what a time. Uh, going straight into it with the velocity of a black hole, though, sometimes I, and not just I, I'm 100% sure that this is a part of the human experience all around. I wake up in the morning and I think, no, that's about it. Just no. You know, sometimes it's just one of those days where you don't feel like going through the motions. Those days, these days suck. They're, they are horrible. They're not fun. And we've all probably had them. We wake up with a soft garbage feeling and a soft PP, and we just don't want to do it, especially because of that soft PP. These days, there's three options, maybe four. Option one is to succumb and be a little baby back loser and go back to sleep. Don't do your exercise. Don't do your meditations. Don't go to work. Screw everything. I'm going to be a used condom because I don't want to do today. All right. Option two is to struggle, suffer, feel pain, get out of bed and do your best to struggle through the day and hate every single minute of it. Just like accidentally watching a dubbed anime, you abhor every moment that you have to experience the day. But with your immense amount of discipline or your immense fear in failing your classes because you're a stupid idiot, you get on with it. Option three is to fake it till you make it, baby. The best way to live life. Be as fake as you possibly can. Hate everyone and pretend you like them. Hate your classes and pretend you like them. Be stupid, but pretend you're smart. Maybe by starting a podcast, who knows. You get out of bed for option three and you go through the day with a beautiful fake smile on your face and pretend. Pretend like the feeling of wanting to literally melt into the mantle of the earth and become one with the magma keeping this planet warm doesn't exist. This is my favorite option, of course. Uh, the last option is, of course, just to turn it off, forehead, yawn, stretch, get your pee-pee up, and go on with the day. Don't let the first few moments of feeling garbage affect the rest of your day, or don't even call the sensation garbage, just let it be and move on with your life. Like the true Buddhist monk you are, you hippie, dippy, crystal-eating, perfect being. If this is you, this is the reason that no one likes you, okay? Of course, I'm kidding. The last, <laughs> the last option is the one that I generally try to go with. Sometimes that feeling, that feeling of, you know, that it's going to be a bad day, that is just, you know, it's the sensation, the moment you wake up, the feeling that it's going to be a bad day, the feeling that your brain isn't functioning at peak capacity, the feeling of your body being heavy, the jaded feeling and the depressed or disconcerted feeling really characterizing these days. It sucks. It really does. I mean, that was a pretty long, long list of things that suck and horrible feelings. Heck, I had to actually go to thesaurus.com and look up antonyms for unmotivated or antonyms for motivated, sorry, because I feel like a crazy or not a crazy. I feel like a lazy wet rag on these days for sure. And the days where I don't have class or something to do, which is literally never. I have class five days a week, homework to grind out basically every single day. And even without homework, I have work on Saturday so I can buy socks. And then I got you guys on Sunday, which is today. And sure, I love writing and talking to you. But man, I got zero breaks, bro. And share this podcast and make my struggle worth it. Thank you. Thank you. God, I suck. But yeah, on on those days, I realize that it's not that I'm telling you, uh, I, like, I'm not telling you to ignore it. I'm not telling you to ignore that feeling that it sucks and that it's horrible, per se. Rather, I use my powers of detachment and viragya 
you know, Viagra is really going to get your PP up. You know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> God, uh, I acknowledge the depressing sensations and I say depressing because it probably genuinely is a spike of depression. And I don't know why I'm saying, quote, on those days, end quote. Obviously, I'm talking about this because it happened in the last week and it was probably a taste at what life is like for people that hate their jobs this week on thursday not this week last week uh, on thursday especially i woke up and i felt really bad it was not fun my body felt really heavy i sleep pretty strictly at around nine so it's not like i should have been sleep deprived but i woke up and my body felt heavy my brain felt really clouded and i just did not want to get out of bed at all it sucked and it was very very much so uh, like my favorite mistress depression but you know I got out of bed uh, it took a few more minutes than usual but I did get out of bed I brushed I opted for yoga instead of exercise I meditated I showered I made breakfast and I rushed over to class 9 a.m classes are definitely better than 8 a.m classes I wake up at 5 in the morning and I still have trouble getting to the 8 a.m class on time but yeah I went on with my day I acknowledged that it was just quote one of those days end quote and I just did it. I did the day. Uh, and not did it as in have intercourse with the day. But if life was a woman with how many times it screwed me, I would love to screw it back for sure. <laughs> Before we continue, I want to say lo-fi is holy music. Let's just, let's just get out of the way. Truly the music of angels, the music created for us unworthy pigs. And if you're listening to this and don't believe in God, maybe I can't make you believe in God, but you know who you can believe in? The lo-fi girl. Truly a transcendent being sent from the heavens, created by God himself, I'm sure. Back to it though. Uh, yeah, those days that you don't want to get out of bed, that you just want to go, you know, either you want to stay in, stay in bed or stay asleep, stay in bed and watch anime, play Clash of Clans, I don't know what you're going to do. Uh, probably one of those two things, right? Like, what else would you do? But they they suck. Anyways, that's the moral of the story. And sometimes they do get better. If you do have the things that you got to do, or not if you do have, if you do the things that you got to do, you know, meditate, exercise, eat well, talk to ferns. And if you don't have ferns, uh, talk to strangers at your college because, again, no one wants to be there. And don't talk to the people that do want to be there. They're probably smarter than you by a factor of 27. And they'll only make you feel stupid and you'll hate them as well. That's why I'm stupid. Yep, that's the reason. It's totally not because I'm just stupid. But if you really have no friends, welcome to the club. Talk to God. And if you still don't believe in him, talk to the lo-fi girl. Yeah? Uh, the question is, uh, do I tell you how to get over these days or do I let you suffer and writhe in agony uh, I experienced for multiple years of my life? Or if you go to school f f for a job you don't care about uh, and later get the job that you don't care about. That's how I felt this entire week of school. It was bad. I woke up and I thought, God dang it, or lo-fi girl, dang it. And it it sucked. I don't like school. And I don't mean the meta conversation, oh, school sucks, look at me, I'm an edgy teenager. I mean me, Mashnur Kabir, your host, does not like school. Is that partly because I suck at it? Probably. I'm not going to sit here and say I would hate it as much as I do if I knew that I could perform well. I probably wouldn't. I may not enjoy it, but I definitely wouldn't hate it as much, even if I could perform well. But just the whole pacing and the manner by which things are run don't jibe with how my brain works and how I learn. I like to really learn things and I take time and care and research and revisiting information multiple times at different points, uh, putting the information to a neat script in my head that I can talk about with people or to this podcast. With school, I can't ask that many questions. But worse than that, I don't have the time to formulate the questions with multiple classes with multiple assignments because the questions i have had to do with two assignments ago information but that information is old news that we're moving on and yes this boils down to my ineptitude because i can't grasp information quick enough but it moves too fast for me and that would be less of an issue if i didn't have six classes a lot all moving that fast i strayed very far from what this episode was supposed to be so let's let's bring that bring it back. Uh, now that we're back on track, uh, let's go to a new track. Life is like a sandwich. Yep, from complaining about everything and being a whiny baby 
life is like a sandwich. If you listen to this podcast, you're one of the greatest human beings on this planet. You know that <laughs> this this is how life is like a sandwich. Sometimes you bite a sandwich and it's good. It slaps. It puts a chub in your pants. Really gets you going. Very opposite to waking up in the morning with a soft pee pee. Sometimes sandwiches go crazy. So other times, however, you bite a sandwich and you want to rip out your tongue rub it across asphalt and clean it until it disintegrates in your hand and slap yourself in the head hard enough to forget the taste. I hate it when that happens. I've lost so many memories and tongues. Uh, obviously, like most things, this is a spectrum. Some sandwiches were made by the chefs in heaven. Some sandwiches were made by the rats in sewers after they fought Pickle Rick. Most, however, are in between. Uh, life is really similar. Sometimes you take a bite and it slaps. Sometimes you take a bite and you want to get slapped. But most bites are pretty average, nothing to go crazy over. Uh, let me tell you what enlightenment looks like. It does not look like a monk in an orange robe sitting atop a mountain with a wet towel getting hit in the balls with a log. It looks like someone that can take a bite of the sandwich when it's good and say, mm, this is really good. Take another bite. When they take a bite of the sandwich and it's really bad, they say, wow, this is really bad, lol. And they take another bite. That's enlightenment. That's inner peace. And that's life. A sandwich. And that's kind of the key to moving forward on those days you want to hit pause. On the days that suck and the days that the sandwich tastes like garbage, you acknowledge that it sucks, laugh at it in the face, and take another bite. Make sure you laugh at it in the face. That's the most important part. When you wake up in the morning with a limp in your pants, laugh. Very, very important. All we can ever do is move forward, continue to take a step forward. And I know this is 8 billion times easier said than done. Trust me, I meditate for 50 hours a day for the past 500 years. I sleep for eight hours a night. I have contemplated life more than a sage in the mountains. If anyone should be able to do this, it would be me. But I have a hard time doing it too. Can I and do I do it? Yeah. All the stupid sage stuff isn't all talk. I am able to, you know, practice what I preach, but it's not a fun feeling uh, and it never will be ever. That's part of it. Uh, the sandwich tastes bad. I can't stop that. I don't think anyone can. I can simply control my reaction and generally my actions overall. Uh, the last thing that or the last part of this episode really does completely stray from everything else in this episode, but it's a thought that I was having while being sad about how dumb I am. Uh, I thought about how I perceive the world and I realized that I see the world through a very neurological and bio, mostly biopsychological, which is a word I created in the shower today, uh, <laughs> a biological perspective. Uh, when I'm talking to someone, I can see different parts in their brain light up when they say certain things or when they tell me certain things about themselves or about their habits or other things. And I can also see how that would translate into their behavior. If someone tells me they slept for four hours, I can see the medial prefrontal cortex drained. I can see the hippocampus drained. I can see certain immune functions in their body drained. And I got really interested in how other people see the world uh, after I like thought about how I see the world. I'm like, wow, I can see people's brains. Um, I wonder how other people see the world. I went to talk to one of my professors from last year and I asked him how he sees the world. And he's a PhD in material science engineering and a master's in electrical engineering. And he told me that he sees systems in a car. He can see the different pieces and how they interact with each other or a heater. He could see the different pieces there and how they interact and like what they do, how the things are moving. Um, and that got me wondering more how other people see the world. And it must be so interesting. Lawyers see words and past cases and connect like pattern recognition with those words. Physicists can like see forces. And when something moves, they can like they're looking at like how the like atoms and the subatomic like movements of those atoms and that would be sick uh, and chemists see elements combining and compounds forming and mixing and separating and that would also be so sick what i'm going to school for is electrical engineering i started thinking about this because i realized that 
in the electrical engineering profession, I need to be able to see electricity moving through circuits. And that's probably why, or that's probably what the people excelling in my program are able to do, see electricity in the circuit diagrams. But, you know, as an electrical engineer, my job quite simply is to control the flow of electricity um, in what I'm doing. I'm working on chips and microprocessors. Hopefully, that's what I'll be going into. So I'm not sure if that's completely true. Maybe it'll be a little bit more nuanced when I start getting into the more specialized classes there. But, uh, you know, we'll get there when we get there. But, uh, you know, being able to, like, see electricity move through circuit diagrams would help a lot in in my class, uh, in my classes. Uh, I feel like it would also be really cool to be able to do that. But I am unfortunately way too dumb for that stuff. I realize I have a bunch of pieces for understanding circuits, but I just can't put them together for some reason. It's not clicking and I'm not sure how to make it click, but hopefully, I mean, I'll figure it out or, you know, I fail all my classes. So I really hope I figure it out. Uh, but it's an interesting thought. Yeah, I, it's, I think it's interesting how I have this semi neurological perception of the world. I hope this makes you think about how you see the world, depending on what you do, what you're talented at, what you studied or done with your life. One thing will make it, you know, one of those things or multiple of those things will make it so you're able to see the world in a certain way. And it's really cool. Uh, and it, it might be multiple things like the like number one thing is definitely the brain thing. I can see people's brains. But the other than that, I can, like I said, with the physicists and how they can see forces, when I shuffle a lot of playing cards, and I've done that for a long time. So when things move, I can kind of understand and see like the momentum in them and how they're moving, and the manner in which they move. I'm pretty good at visualizing uh, movement and how, you know, physical objects are going to move if only I could visualize electricity and how that's going to move but maybe one day uh, I feel like I have to ask a lot of really dumb questions to figure that out um, or just watch a really good YouTube video but I have not found one of those uh, so <laughs> maybe but you know you see the world in a certain way uh, and it's really cool it's your own way of seeing the world and how things function. It's normal to me, but some people would probably think that it's sick that I can see people's brains while I talk to them. Uh, or maybe it creeps them out. Who knows? Uh, right? It could, it could go the other way. Imagine talking to someone that can see what's going on in your head. Um, I can see what's going on in your head, kind of. I can't see your thoughts. I can just see your brain and how that's probably looking like uh, and, and, the, and the amount of electricity and the amount of uh, neurological activity going on within certain parts and pieces of your brain. That's all, though, for this episode of The Seriously Funny. <laughs> uh, music, uh, there has been two albums within the past two weeks. Trippy Red dropped Trip at Night. It was pretty solid. I liked it better than Pegasus and A Love Letter to You 4. It's pretty good, but I haven't been able, or I haven't been as into, like, trap music. Uh, the song Party at the Cemetery by Poor Stacy. You know, that one went crazy. It's also new. The new single by DC, The Dawn, Notice Me, also also goes extremely dummy. Uh, Lil Tekka also released an album, We Love You Tekka 2, which I didn't listen to it, but it was okay. Nothing really standing out from the bits I heard when I put it on in the background. Overall, a lot of music, but I'm kind of waiting for the deluxe versions of the album because Trippy always releases deluxes. Uh, I'm not sure if Tekka will. We'll see. For anime, I finished Scum's Wish. The art was really good. The story was very dramatic. Uh, it was a drama, and it did pretty well at, you know, being a drama. The story itself, though, just like raw, it was interesting. I think it's an acquired taste. But if you're into drama shows, I'll give it the recommend. Uh, I'm on the last episode. Actually, not anymore. I finished it. Uh, I finished... Uh, I've been killing slimes for 300 years and maxed out my level. Yes, that is the name of the anime. It's extremely, extremely wholesome, and it's just fun. It's a slice of life, a sekai anime. Uh, I loved it. Really, really light to watch. Uh, really, really fun. Really, really funny. I highly recommend it. It was absolutely adorable. Uh, next, I'll be watching Zombieland Saga, which recently got a season two, so it should be good. The art style looks awesome. Uh, I started watching it last night, actually, and I watched episode one. Uh, it's a music anime. Uh, it's not exactly like the 
thriller horror effing zombie stuff that i was uh, anticipating uh, i think it's just going to be more of a funny anime with some musical aspects so uh definitely not what i anticipated but you know i'll watch it i'll go through it whatever it is what it is uh, other than that i'll keep trying to struggle my way through school you keep on keeping homies thank you for listening uh, i'll see you next week peace